And it's amazing to see these young people who care about our mission and know so much about it. Um, this young girl who's 13 years old, Shimoy Kalra, she reached out to me a few months ago and instantly knew she was super brilliant and passionate and driven for her cause. So I was like, you should, she applied to be a cast fellow. I said, you should help. She's so well-spoken. I said, you should help with film outreach. So she's on our film team and she came all the way here from Toronto. She's amazing. We were at dinner a few nights ago with her family who's in town too. And her brother is like asking me, he's like, oh, do you think uh, cultivated meat will help be healthier? And Shmoy jumps in and goes, do you not understand the antibiotic resistance properties of cultivated meat? Like, it's like <laughs> amazing. And so um, I just think she's amazing to give an overview on what this concept is. And so without further ado, Shmoy Kalra will give an overview of cultivated meat. Hi, sorry everyone. <laughs> <laughs> One more thing I promise that's his. She's going to slay this presentation, no cap. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I taught you these, really. This is a lot. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Shmoy. Uh, I really want to start off by saying, oh my God, is life crazy? You know, to, to be here in San Francisco, let alone in this room with all of you, like, it is something out of my wildest of dreams. So thank you so much to Chris. Literally the best human being I've ever met in my entire life. Um, to cast the incredible team here, everyone is working so, so hard. And, you know, it's even more than what you see on the website that I have been on, like, probably more times than I have been outside, if we're being honest. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so grateful to be here, really. Like, this is insane. Um, and I'm so grateful that, you know, you guys have kind of been here with me on my journey that I think started about, like, two and a half years ago when I was in sixth grade. Um, I had to write this speech for school, you know, our, our teacher signed it and every single person in the class could write this persuasive speech about literally anything in the world. You know, I know some people who wrote about like, why basketball is better than soccer. I know some people wrote it about like, the state of our financial situation of the entire world right now. It was really interesting. For me, I had just gotten a dog and I'd grown up loving animals. I was actually raised vegetarian. So I was like, you know what, animal welfare, here we go. And I decided to write my speech on why testing on animals is unethical. To be honest, I really knew nothing about this topic before, but you know, as I was typing up these paragraphs, I got to the second to last one, which is dedicated solely to alternatives. It was talking about, you know, well, testing on animals, it's this outdated concept because there are so many other alternatives in our world right now, like the in vitro method of testing on cell cultures grown in labs instead of human beings and animals. Yeah. Crazy, I know. <laughs> I, I thought this was really, really interesting. You know, I didn't really know much about bio at that time. Um, I think I was like 10 and we never really learned of it. <laughs> um, but, you know, I searched it up, thought it was pretty interesting. And as I typed in, literally on Google, in vitro method, something else came up. And I was really surprised by it. I was really curious about it. Um, it basically said in vitro meat. And I was like, what? That makes no sense. I really didn't understand it. And so, you know, I naturally went on this massive rabbit hole. I read papers and articles and, oh, I watched all of these videos, saw all the headlines. And I actually stumbled upon CAS, and this is like what sparked my love with everything. Um, one of the projects here at CAS called Project CMF, or Project Cell-Based Meat Facility. Oh my god, it is magnificent, it's so glorious. Um, I remember I was like seeing all these images of um, these cells in petri dishes, and I didn't understand it. You know, it didn't really seem appetizing to me. Um, especially because like, I'd grown up vegetarian, I never really thought of it much. But then Project CMF was this magnificent and like, so um, wondrous almost um, of a building. And it was like this literal facility of cultivated meat. It was so incredible to me. And as I literally read the entire part of that website like 20 times, I actually started learning more about our traditional animal agriculture systems right now. You know, even though I was vegetarian, I still had this idyllic picture in my mind, you know, I was imagining these picturesque farms where animals can roam around free as can be. You know, I never really understood that the, the reality is so far from that dreamy notion I once had in mind. You know, these animals are confined in inhumane and unhygienic conditions. It's really quite horrifying to actually see. And I know a lot of you guys have like dedicated your entire life to working towards this issue. It's so, so incredible. But as I was, you know, doing this research, I actually realized like, Meat is a lot more in our world. You know, it's more, it's more than just this meal on our plates. It's a part of culture, traditions, family. You know, it's not something that we can practically take away. But at the same time, we can't really continue to source it the way we are. Because 
this meat is actually not good for us. It's really bad for the people. This meat is more than just protein. Instead, there's antibiotics, bacteria, so much added sodium and you know, carbohydrates. It's more than what you know, we perceive it to be. It's, of course, horrible for the environment. And, oh my god, it's so bad for the environment. We are using so many land resources. Um, yeah, so much land, so much resources, and we're actually producing insane amounts, insane amounts of greenhouse gas emissions in the process, which is one of the leading causes of climate change. As we can see, it's really, really breaking down our world. And it is horrible for the animals because, like I said, they are literally these lambs raised for slaughter, and throughout their entire life, they are not being treated with any care, any decency. So, right, here's the baseline. Meat is horrible for our current meat systems. Our current agriculture systems are horrible for the people, the animals, and the world. Right, but what can you do now? Well, the good news is we're not living in the olden days anymore. We are living in a modern world with modern advancements, modern technology, modern concepts. And one of those concepts is cultivated meat, or in vitro meat as I knew it back then. Cultivated meat is real, true, genuine meat that comes from cells instead of from an animal through slaughter. It was such an insane concept to me, and Project CMF like really pushed it down and solidified it. Like this is the future of our world, you know? Cultivated meat is created by taking this harmless biopsy from an animal, taking that cell, putting it into a bioreactor where it's fed the nutrients to grow and multiply into muscle tissue, which is the basis of meat as we know it. It's so, so interesting and so cool because cultivated meat is going to allow us to continue to have the same flavors, the same tastes, same memories and traditions that we've cherished for generations, but without the guilt of harming ourselves and our world and the people around us. You know, that's the world I envision, and it starts with cultivated meat. Thank you so much. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to try and answer them to the best of my ability. It might not be, like, super scientific, but I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really means a lot. Oh my god. <sighs> yes. Go ahead. <laughs> I had one, but does it? Um, okay. Um, well, I was on two things. One is like you reference like your like grade school, but I can't tell what your age is to save my life. But I'm like, you seem so bubbly and cute. You could just be like in high school still, or you could be really smart and just. You know, we had like a senior level executive. She's 13. <laughs> it's, 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 really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, that was not even a problem. Wow. I'm going to share 13 year old. Thank awesome. you so much. I, I, my question to you is um, personal question. Like, do you eat like potatoes or do you eat like the product? as a former, as a vegetarian, and I, I know people are like kind of uncomfortable about it, like maybe I could be convinced, but like, do you find you're in a weird space where you're both like, like wanting to sell people on this product, but you yourself find it kind of a weird thing to be eating? Yeah, oh my God, definitely. <laughs> um, for me, um, I, I was, I, I'm raised vegetarian um, for as long as I can remember. My family had like a lot of health issues going on, and at that point they're like, wow, life is a really crazy thing that we have, and they want to start appreciating it for animals as well. Um, I kind of grew up like thinking that, you know, I just don't want to harm an animal, which is why I was vegetarian, but I didn't really understand um, all the implications of our current animal agriculture systems. Um, when I did hear of cultivated meat, like I said, I thought it was like really interesting, and it didn't make sense to me, really. Right? I, thought, I, I knew that people weren't going to be like vegan or vegetarian forever, and it was time to flow to get like, everyone on board with that, and I think that's why cultivated meat is like such an incredible and like remarkable concept you know it's not for the vegans or the vegetarians it's yeah yeah definitely yeah um i know people who like you know they have a turkey every single thanksgiving every christmas and it's not something that they want to give up but like they also don't want to contribute to the environmental degradation that's going on right now right it's kind of it's, it's something for them you know I, I don't think like i know a lot of us here are vegan or vegetarian like I, I'm, it's maybe not for us you want to try it crazy cool that's awesome but if you don't like that, that's perfectly fine too, right? It's, it's for the people who still want to have all those tastes and um, are like very committed to that part of themselves, but also want to be committed to our current planet. So, I mean, it's interesting. If I had the opportunity, I think I'd really like to. I'd like to try it. Um, to some people, that means I'm not vegetarian anymore. Um, it might mean you're not vegan, right? Because it's like more, uh, if you're like going towards the concept of not harming a living being, then um, yeah, I guess it is vegan. Um, but if you're talking like physically, I guess it, it is not vegan, right? Yeah, it's like, it's kind of, it's a really interesting thing to like, kind of have coexist in your mind, but yeah, yeah.
Actually, like talking to my friends about this very recently during like our free time in eighth grade um I was like going to them and I was like guys what do you think of cultivating me and they're like what you know they didn't know. <laughs> they didn't know that it existed um, and I think that's why everything that's happening at CAS is so important for our world because you know it's literally the future and I think people need to be aware about that they need to be aware about the possibilities and the potential I remember I like sat down I had my voice memos out and I was like okay so this is the type of stuff that you can create from like cells it's really, really cool. Um, this is the companies that are doing it. I've talked about um, Mission Barnes. I've talked about Upside Foods. I've talked about every. I've talked about literally everything in this entire world. And I've shown them photos and stuff. And they're like, "Wow, you know, I'm like, I'm so down to try this." You know, I just think that people need to kind of be aware. They need to understand, like, you know, it, I, I get it. It might be kind of scary, like with the world we're living in. Like AI is coming up so fast. It's understandable, but people need to like have that proper understanding of like this is cells. You know, it's not like. GPS's and chemicals, as people seem to think. Um, yeah, I, I think I like sat down. I explained it to them. At first, they were like, "I don't understand anything. Like, this seems like really weird." And they're like, "Wait, this is really cool. If I saw it, like, I'd try if I can like afford it." So, I mean, I, I think like having a small conversation that really shifted their perspective. And I think it, yeah, I think kids, especially like we're very open-minded right now, um, even though some people might not think it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? That was gonna be my question. Your reaction. To your reaction of your friends, that's the question you answered it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Cool, are there any more questions, or? Okay. Yeah? Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. I don't know how I'm going to follow that up, but I'll do my best. Uh,